Ah, and we are live. Welcome back to Takes by Fans. We got a great show for you today. As always, we are live every single day at noon Eastern. If you want to watch live, head over to twitch.tv slash Takes by Fans. If you want to watch but not live, live head over to our youtube channel takes by fans we post all of our shows and clips of the show there on a daily basis and if you just want to listen we are on podcasting apps spotify apple Podcasts, google Podcasts, i heart radio so however you want to watch or listen we've got you covered multiple ways all righty today is a big old tuesday folks we are still in the thick of it, you know, Super Bowl week, all that. We all know it's coming up. Um, and, you know, we, we've taken care of most of the business here, but, you know, we've got free time to kind of just pick and choose what we want to kind of go back to, you know, because I'm still loving the Bengals plus four and a half, folks, and I'm seeing what y'all are saying, folks. You know, I'm on Twitter. I'm on the internet. I know what y'all are saying, but I still don't get why everybody is so big on the Rams. I have not found that factor. Um, it, it's literally it's seeming like everybody. Everybody's on the Rams. Everybody wants to swallow the points. They think it's going to be a little bit of a blowout for the Rams. And I don't know. I don't think I've seen what y'all have been seeing. I don't think I'm buying into what y'all are saying. So for the rest of this week, we're trying to, you know, go back to everything that we kind of hold valuable. Um, you know, to these teams and players on why we kind of believe in them, uh, see if there's any flaws in their games and all that. So what we're going to be doing uh, today in regards to that, I want to go back to Joe Burrow's best game statistically. I believe it's week 16 against the Ravens. Uh, let's just watch the replay of that game. How did that game look? The best game of the season from Joe Burrow offensively. He threw for like 500 yards, four touchdowns, no picks, 83% complete. It's a magnificent game, but I want to revisit that game. I also want to see how the defense looked in that game. Once again, this Bengals defense, folks, deserves so much credit. I know the Rams defense is fantastic. It's incredible, and we're going to talk about that as well. You know, uh, why, you know, right now we are at 99% locking in the Bengals with the four and a half points. We'll check the spread today, see what, the, what that all is. But, um, yeah, I, I know the Rams' defense is good, and defense does win championships. And tomorrow we are going to watch, um, because we don't have all the time in the world today, uh, but on tomorrow's show we are going to watch, you know, Joe Burrow. We're going to go a, a little bit more in-depth in that Titans playoff game where he got sacked nine times but still ended up winning. So we'll talk it all through. You know, we've got this extra week. It's great that we've got two weeks to kind of truly break it all down for the biggest bet of the year, who wins the Super Bowl. So, you know, we're still we still got work to be done, folks. Work still needs to get done. So we're watching Joe Burrow's best game today, statistically, and breaking it down, revisiting that. Uh, we got to break down the NBA from yesterday. Uh, coach news. Coaching is all kind of wrapped up now. The last head coach for the Saints finally got hired. And it's not the great decision, but there wasn't really anything left. And they got a solid hire. So we'll talk all that through. Um, and uh, there's some other stories we got to talk to. Because remember yesterday, folks, when we were talking about Alvin Kamara, we were kind of waiting for a picture of the victim to be released to see how badly he was beaten. And uh, we've, we've got the photo, folks, and oof, woof, I'll just leave it at that. So tons of stuff to talk about today, tons of stuff to watch, tons of stuff to break down. So let's just jump right into it. We'll start with the NBA, then transition to the NFL. Uh, but... Here we go. Let's start with the NBA. Man, oh man, what a great, what a great night in the NBA last night, folks. Did we call it to a T, or did we call it to a T? Yes, folks. Sheesh. Um, you know, we know what we're talking about here, folks. Uh, but uh, before we start to get breaking down into any of the games from last night, trade deadline coming up Thursday, and we got another trade that just broke. I want to say in the like last twenty minutes. But here we go. CJ McCollum. We know his name was kind of floating around, and this man has officially been traded and man oh man what a what a steal by this team so here we go the Pelicans have traded for CJ McCollum folks so CJ McCollum is now a New Orleans Pelicans with Valanchunas and Brandon Ingram and hopefully Zion one day when he decides he can play again in the NBA so what an absolute steal of a trade here once again the Blazers are blowing it all up they got rid of Norman Powell they got rid of CJ McCollum watch for Damian Lillard to be traded 
traded. And it's unfortunate because Damian Lillard had an out. He had a little bit of an out last season, at the end of last season, but he decided to run it back again. And now CJ McCollum, you know, leaves and Norman Powell leaves. Damian Lillard does not want to be on this Blazers team with no chance to win a ring. Uh, so expect Damian Lillard. I don't know if he gets traded. Once again, that injury, he may finish up this year and then head somewhere this offseason, but uh, yeah, the Blazers, they are blowing it up, and you know, this is what we've kind of been endorsing. You haven't gotten it done for the last five seasons. Uh, nothing's going to change. We've seen kind of the ceiling that this team has hit together. CJ McCollum's a great kind of, you know, number two slash number three for a team. Damian Lillard can be a great number one for a team, but just together, it never all came to fruition here with this Blazers team, and they had some good runs. I believe they made it to a Western Conference Finals one season, but just not enough to get over that hump and now with uh, Chauncey Billups as the head coach not getting you know the best out of the players I mean even when Damian Lillard was healthy in the beginning of the season that Blazers team was not good they were not clutch there was no Dame time this team was lifeless uh, there was no pulse on this team of what we know this team can play like so Blazers are blowing it up that you know that's the endorsement from us and we see it here and now for the full trade scenario right here I mean I don't know what the bla I mean the Blazers were truly selling here this is an absolute win by the Pelicans so here we go the full trade details the Pelicans get CJ McCollum and they also get Larry Nance Jr. he's gonna be a really great role player coming off the bench here another big who's got some winning experience he played with LeBron James so you've got that you know great information insight from him and I mean he doesn't need to kind of be a number one or a number two or number three or even a number four five option just kind of number seven coming off the bench here Larry Nance Jr. so they get a starter you can put CJ McCollum right in the starting lineup Larry Nance Jr. coming off the bench and then they also get Tony Snell another kind of you know valuable veteran that can get you some nice production coming off the bench so what an absolute home run hitter a home run hit and they didn't really have to give up that much they gave up Josh Hart a solid piece. Uh, Nikhil Alexander Walker, uh, who also is a solid bench piece, but uh, you know, uh, you know, I would trade him as well. Uh, but a nice role player here. Thomas Sortonsky, DD. Lauzada, a first round pick and two second round picks. And once again, draft picks are trash, especially in the NBA, folks. I mean, you don't even play, you don't even play rookies or really kind of first year players, second year players that much anyway. So if it's not a number one pick overall, if it's not a number two pick overall, maybe even number three pick overall in the NBA, who cares? So yes, trade those picks, a first round and two second round picks. So this is an absolute steal, an absolute flea by this Pelicans team and I'm all here for it I mean we've been trending up on their bet ability the last couple of games here and now that they've got this yes yes bet ability is there this Pelicans team needs to be taken seriously folks let's update the rankings to see where they are currently before this trade has happened we get this Pelicans team currently at the 10th seed in the Western Conference where the Blazers are the 11th seed wow 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 Blazer, Blazers truly selling I mean they're only a game uh half a game back from that 10th seed but then they partner they trade partner with the Pelicans so Blazers are fully sending in the season we'll see how Anthony Simons does by himself now we still hope he can give us some solid production when he's out there by himself um, and we'll see what Damian Lillard does but uh, watch out for this Pelicans team in the Western Conference to make some moves win games be competitive against some really good uh, kind of top half of the league here Pelicans folks remember the name we are going to be talking about them a lot folks and I think I'm about to be betting them the first chance we get with this new team absolutely so that is the trade, folks. And once again, we got a couple more days, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. I want to say around 4 o'clock is the trade deadline. So trades can still happen. And uh, speaking of trades right here, folks, uh, potentially trades coming up because we get this. LeBron on the trade deadline says, quote, if you have an opportunity to get better, no one turns that down. So lay GM here, LeBron always wanting to have a say in the personnel, always kind of makes some moves at the trade deadline. And once again, that trade that we threw out there yesterday, Lakers with the Kings for De'Aaron Fox and Buddy Heald, 
LeBron gets uh, De'Aaron Fox and Buddy Heald for Taylor Horn Tucker and Russell Westbrook. The trade works out. So, you know, we didn't think, you know, we, we're not putting that much uh, believability that that trade will happen. But then we get this quote by LeBron yesterday. So watch for this Lakers team to try to make a move before Thursday. Can't get CJ McCollum, who's probably the next best value. We'll see who LeBron James decides. But watch for this Lakers team at the trade deadline. And then we also get another quote here. Here by LeBron James. The man was speaking wisdom all day yesterday. Trade. He wants to make a trade. But then this. What have we been saying about this Lakers team? Malik Monk is going to be kind of, you know, the main deciding factor if this Lakers team makes it deep in the playoffs or if they're a first round exit. And LeBron James says the same thing right here. LeBron James on Malik Monk says, quote, every single game he's gotten better and better. He's played exceptional basketball. So great endorsement for LeBron James. We need to see uh, Malik Monk in the starting lineup. And I'm still, you know, holding out hope for this Lakers team to be good even if they don't make any moves at the trade deadline once Kendrick Nunn comes back and we get Malik Monk in the starting lineup and LeBron and AD are finally all healthy and having some kind of rhythm underneath them this season I'm still you know a believer that this Lakers team can make a little bit of noise in the playoffs obviously uh, making a trade at the trade deadline can uh, definitely propel them even further, but I, I, I still think we should be feeling decent about this Lakers team in the playoffs, but LeBron James endorsing Malik Monk, you gotta love it, and uh, also kind of endorsing a trade, so we'll see what happens there. Once again, just a couple more days before the trade deadline, so it could get crazy. Alrighty, those were all the NBA stories we had to cover for just uh, to start it off here. But now let's start talking about these games that we absolutely nailed yesterday. Folks, come on, give us our credit. Damn, damn. All right, but here we go, folks. First game up, and we said this was the best value. We said this was disrespectful value. We could not believe the spread was this low. And what happens, folks? The team that we loved absolutely blew them out. Yes, yes, yes. Raptors get the win 116-101 to 101 over the Hornets. The Hornets are not good, folks. They are not consistent. They are not as good as they were last year, and that is truly alarming. Little disappointed in LaMelo Ball. We have to see you getting better and better and better and better and better and better and better every single year. I don't want to see you stay stagnant. Take a step back. That does not show that you are a good player uh, or a good team. The Knicks taking a huge step back from what they were last season. That is not a good team. Julius Randle is not a good player overall. We know this now. So the Hornets and the Knicks are truly in the same boat right here. This Hornets team, the Knicks, they just go on runs. They are not consistent. They are so reliable on catching fire for a few runs throughout the game. And that's really what decides if they win or lose. Did they catch enough fire throughout the game to win it? That's not sustainable basketball. That's not sustainable sustainable winning basketball that's not championship level winning basketball you can't just live and die off of runs folks the Knicks do that we we we've truly seen that clear as day these last two games where they you know were up uh, real early on the Lakers. They were up once again real early last night uh, against the Jazz, against the Jazz on the road. And uh, once again, they just cannot finish the game. They look awful in the fourth quarter. They don't know how to win down the stretch. And, uh, you know, the coaches, Tom Thibodeau, I mean, that's really, you know, how he's planning to win these games. Winning defensively and closing out in the fourth quarter. And they've done none of that these last two games or really all year long. So, Hornets are not a good team. All uh, for the most part, bet against them. And same thing for the Knicks. That's why they're our sponsors. They just rely too much on the runs, and we saw that except, uh, especially last night against the Hornets. They kept it decently, decently close for a few quarters. They were hitting some nice runs here to you know. Um, negate the Raptors runs that they were on but at the end of the day in the fourth quarter you can't rely on the Hornets and the Knicks to get it done they do not win games and uh, we are we are cashing in on it folks so Hornets get the big old win here 
by 15 points, 116, 101, and the value was Raptors minus one and a half, folks, and we just cannot believe that. We told y'all we would, you know, kind of bet it all the way up to Raptors minus six, and we even were low on that. We could have bet this one all the way up to really Raptors minus 10 and felt comfortable with it, folks. Disrespectful value. We know what it looks like, folks, and when we when we know what it looks like, you can cash in on it, and that's exactly what we did last night. So let's start here with the Raptors since they got the win. Fred Van Vliet, 20 points, 5 assists, 5 rebounds, 6 of 11 from 3. Man, oh man, that, can that man shoot. Gary Trent Jr., 24 points, 2 steals, 2 assists, 3 rebounds, 4 of 9 from the 3. Pascal, Pascal MVP Siakam back at the 5, 24 points, 8 assists, 11 rebounds, shooting 62%. Sheesh, sheesh, folks. Love this Raptors team. Stop disrespecting Nick nurse do you understand what coaching can do for you folks for your team I mean these are all great role players I don't know if there's any superstar on this team you may be able to call Pascal Siakam a superstar I don't know if I go with Fred Van Vliet in superstar status at the current moment but I mean folks this is our starting five Fred Van Vliet a point guard who really nobody's ever heard of until he got to the Raptors with Nick Nurse Gary Trent Jr. who's always you know a solid two we get Siakam, OG Ananubi, and rookie Scotty Barnes, folks. And this is the lineup that is working and dominating and beating good teams and being competitive consistently because of Nick Nurse bringing it all together and knowing how this team can function and flow to win games. And it's so, gosh dang, consistent. I love it. I love this Raptors team. Man, oh, man. So Pascal Siakam, 24 points, 11 rebounds, 8 assists. you got to love it. OG Ananubi playing the 4, 20 points, 3 steals, 2 assists, 9 rebounds. And then our man, Rookie of the Year, potentially, Scotty Barnes, 15 points, 8 rebounds, and only 9 shots. We will absolutely take that. Nothing truly great from the bench last night. Um, really only three players playing any meaningful minutes. We had Precious with five points and four rebounds. And Chris Boucher, eight points and six rebounds coming off the bench. But uh, truly reliant on their starters. And they all play absolutely fantastic almost on a nightly basis. That's why we are so big on betting this Raptors team. And could not believe the disrespect yesterday. Alrighty, now the Hornets, LaMelo Ball, only 15 points, he's shooting 26%, I mean, not reliable, he had the 9 assists, which is great, but once again, up and down, relying too much on the runs, we had Miles Bridges with a solid 25 points, 5 assists, 6 rebounds, once again, Mason Plumley at the 5, you know, only took 3 shots, 6 points, hit them all, 7 rebounds, and then Terry Rozier, 20 points, 6 assists, 5 rebounds, Gordon Hayward, not really truly ready to play last night, only playing 6 minutes, coming back off the injury off the bench we had Kelly Oubre Jr. put up 17 points which is good but he also shot 0 of 8 from the 3 not efficient PJ Washington 15 points 9 rebounds good but 1 of 6 from the 3 so they rely on the 3 ball way too heavily they rely on the on the runs throughout the games way too consistently and that's why this Hornets team I mean what do we got as a record folks what is their record um, I don't even think oh, they are number 9 how are the heck uh, this Eastern Conference folks can you step it up you got the Hornets at the ninth seed what the hell is that that. Three and seven in their last 10 five game losing streak. We've been selling the Hornets, folks, and that's exactly why. So, uh, Raptors get the big O win here 116 101 over the Hornets. All right, next game up here, and man, oh, man, we love our dogs, folks, and the kennel was absolutely barking last night. He get the dominant win, 121-100 over the Wizards. Our dogs, Jimmy Butler, 19 points on 53% shooting, four assists, three rebounds. Bam Adebayo, 21 points, led the team in scoring. We love that. Bam Adebayo, the big, being aggressive, 21 points, seven rebounds, four assists. Duncan Robinson, 12 points points four of nine from the three all right it's okay and then Kyle Lowry 11 points five assists four rebounds doing it all and then the bench folks the best thing about this heat team is their bench and we got it all last night Gabe Vincent 16 points eight assists and can we shout out Gabe Vincent folks how how truly great and wonderful and consistent has this man been no Tyler Hero last night he need he knows bench scoring needs to come from somewhere and he takes it upon himself to go six of nine 
nine from the field, 16 points. Gotta love it. We get Kayla Martin. A big shout out to Kayla Martin. 15 points, three assists off the bench. And Dwayne Dedman, 11 points, five rebounds in only 15 minutes. The bench, the starters, the dogs, the barking, the woofing, folks. Gotta love this Heat team. Um, and we also took them, uh, do we, yeah, we took them yesterday. I believe we bet on our dogs. Heat minus six, no problem. Um, and then the Wizards, once again, Kyle Kuzma can't get it done himself. He only scored 12 points last night. That's not going to get it done. Leading scorer worse was Corey Crispert coming off the bench, 20.6 rebounds. Montres Harold still coming off the bench, 13 points. They only played that man 17 minutes. Give that man some more play out here, absolutely. Um, you know, he's proven he can be a dominant starter, a dominant big, but not really giving him that much love out there. Uh, 17 points off the bench. Uh, give him give him a couple more minutes. What, what do you got to lose? You're getting blown out by the Heat, and you're still not playing Montres Harold? What are we doing out here? Um, still no Bradley Beal, so really no chance of winning here. And uh, Kyle Kuzma, 12 points, two assists, two re rebounds when you need to be the guy. He was a minus 35 on the floor, folks. A minus 35 in only 26 minutes. Kyle Kuzma's not the guy. He has like two good games in a row, and everybody kind of loves him again, but we're not going to fall for that anymore. We are officially stating right here Kyle Kuzma is not good. He's not a one. He's not a, even a really a number two on a team. He could be a second. Solid number three option for a big three, but uh, nobody wants to play with them, a la LeBron and AD kick them off the team last year. So, uh, Wizards, folks, classic Wizards. Heat get the win, 121 to 100. Alrighty, next game up here, Suns at the Bulls, and I got to give the Bulls credit here of being competitive in this game, and the Bulls always surprise me, folks, and how competitive they can be against the best teams in the league, and they are still the number uh, the number three seed in the Eastern Conference, so we do have to give them their respect, um, so we are going to be giving them their respect. They only lost by three last night, 127 to 124 to the Suns. Let's start here with the Bulls, since they kept it really competitive. Once again, DeMar DeRozan can always rely on this man 38 points four assists five rebounds we get Vucevic down low only a light 13 points but he had the nice 12 rebounds Zach Levine back last night 32 points eight assists six rebounds doing his thing we had AO back at the one and we've seen AO have about two three good games at as the starting one here but he floundered last night 2.0 assists in 32 minutes what are you doing you're not facilitating the floor you took seven shots only hit one of them can we get Kobe White back in the starting lineup? Kobe White last night, 13 points, one assist in 25 minutes coming off the bench here. We like him. We see he plays better in the starting lineup. I, I, I don't get why they keep bringing him down to the bench. I don't love it. But uh, well done for the Bulls last night. The big three got it done. Kobe White contributed, but everybody else just fell a little short last night. Um, and then for the Suns, uh, no blowout here. There, there was some nice big leads in this game, but uh, the Bulls stuck to it. And we've seen this Bulls team play down to the wire, even uh, when they were kind of, uh, what was the, uh, the last game before this? What was it the 76ers where they were kind of close? No Zach Levine, and they brought it within like four points in like the final three minutes, but then it ballooned right back up, unfortunately. But, uh, you know, they play right down to the final whistle. So big time shout out to this Bulls team. I don't know if we love batting them quite at the current moment, but um, they are still the third third seed in the Eastern Conference, so we do still have to give them a little bit of respect, a little bit of credit. But for the Suns last night, Chris Paul doing his thing, 19 points, 11 assists. Devin Booker, 38 points, 5 assists, 4 rebounds. And, you know, this Suns team, you know, if we can get Devin Booker 25, 30-plus points consistently out here, that's where we truly, you truly have to respect the Suns team and kind of fear them a little bit when Devin Booker's on. And he shot 60% last night, 5 of 10 from the 3 as well. We got DeAndre 8 and 13 points, 9 rebounds, holding it down, down low. McCall Bridges, a nice 15 points. And then Jay Crowder, 10 points, 6 assists, 10 rebounds. Wonderful. And then JaVale McGee, once again, shout out to these bigs, folks. These bigs are dominating the league. Old bigs, new bigs, red big, blue bigs. It doesn't matter. They get it done. JaVale McGee last night, 16 points, 8 rebounds coming off the bench. Bigs, folks. It's the season of bigs. Season of bigs, folks. Too bad Zion is not out there because that man's a big, and he's real gosh dang good. Maybe a little bit too big for his own good. That's why he's not playing. But uh, bigs are dominating the league here, and the Suns showed, showed it last night, winning 127-124. All right, next game up here, we get the Warriors at the Thunder. A little bit of a close game around halftime, but the Warriors stick to it and get 
uh, you know, the eventual blowout here by 12, winning 110 to 98 over the Thunder last night. For the Warriors, Steph Curry doing his thing, 18 points, 10 assists, 9 rebounds, close to that triple dub. We get Klay Thompson, 21 points, 2 assists, 2 steals, 2 rebounds. We still have no Draymond Green, so Otto Porter fill, filling in two points, no rebounds, one assist. Definitely not Draymond Green ask out there. And then Andrew Wiggins, always solid, 15 points, five rebounds. Off the bench, Jordan Poole, 11 points, eight assists, eight rebounds. And Jonathan Kaminga, once again, getting it done, taking 11 shots, being aggressive. Man, oh man, coming off the bench, being aggressive, taking 11 shots when you got Jordan Poole and all that. Hey, we got to love the confidence there. 16 points. Points, four assists, four rebounds. A wonderful night. Man, oh, man. So, Warriors keep on chugging along here. And then for the Thunder, once again, no Shea Gillis Alexander. So, Josh Giddy out there by himself with Lugan Stort. Josh Giddy, 16 points, 11 rebounds. Lugan Stort led the team in scoring 26 points. Four rebounds always surprises us, uh, but it's just never enough here like we know. So, the Thunder, man, oh, man. No betability there. We know that. Warriors get the win, 110-98. to and then the last game of the night there. So to round it out, folks, we had it all going last night. We had our dogs, the kennel, the Miami Heat. We had the most disrespectful value of the season so far. Blazers minus one and a half, winning by 15. And then to top it all off, folks, our sponsor was playing last night, the New York Knicks. So y'all know what that meant. You bet against them, even with the spread. Jazz minus seven and a half here, and they win by nine. Uh, no, no problem. But once again, uh, you know, Nick's kind of, you know, decently competitive in the first quarter, second quarter. Jazz only had about a, uh, a three-point lead going into halftime. Knicks made a run in the third quarter, got the lead, but it's not sustainable. It's not consistent. Relying too much on the run, it's not going to win games. We get Evan Fournier having bad turnovers at the worst times in clutch time. We get everybody jacking up threes all the time here for the Knicks. Stop it. They took 33 threes last night, and I don't love it. They hit eight of them. They shot 24% from the three. That's not really their game. Start feeding Julius Randle a little bit more down low. He did go two of five from the three, and he hit this crazy three last night that I'm absolutely pissed about because it cost me $90 last night, folks. I had the Raptors plus one at half, and that was at plus 100 odds, folks. It was disrespectful all over that Raptors game last night. And then I parlayed it with the Jazz minus four and a half at halftime, and uh, they were up by six. They were up by six with uh, one possession left for the Knicks, and uh, Julius Randle hits a freaking crazy step back three with the hand right in his face and it like swirled in and that's how I lost $95 because of Julius Randle hitting a magnificent three but uh, they don't get the win at the end of the day it's not sustainable it does not win games folks so that does not impress us so let's start here with the Jazz since they got it done last night. And uh, they definitely need Rudy Gobert back desperately. They were getting killed on the boards all game long. And that was kind of, once again, fueling the Knicks' runs a little bit throughout the game. So I don't know if I'm loving betting on the Jazz here, watching them. I thought they only needed one or the other, Damian Mitchell or, uh, or Donovan Mitchell or Rudy Gobert. But they truly need both of those players out there because on the boards, Hassan Whiteside was looking a little laxadaisical. Musical. Oduka Uzu, uh, Uzubuki, he wasn't getting it done either. So uh, I, think, I, I think I'm not betting the Jazz here for a little bit, but we'll see how they continue to progress. But Donovan Mitchell back last night, 32 points, four steals, six assists, seven rebounds. He doing his thing. Uh, we get uh, Mike Connolly at the one, 18 points, seven assists. Bohan Bogdanovich, 20 points. And then Uduka Uzubuki at the 5, 7 points, 14 rebounds. We get uh, Jordan Clarkson coming off the bench, doing his thing, 16 points on 12 shots, getting it done. So classic jazz last night. And then the Knicks, Julius Randle had 30 points, 5 assists, 6 rebounds, shot 50%. But, uh, you know, it's not resulting in the wins. The two best players, they stepped up. R.J. Barrett got off to a hot start, 23 points, 6 assists, 7 rebounds. Evan Fournier, 16 points, but a couple of bad turnovers at some bad times. He had a 10 
technical foul at the end of the first half that was playing into. I almost had to thank Evan Fournier because we were this close of hitting uh, Jazz minus four and a half at halftime, but that Julius Randle three uh, screws it up. But the Evan Fournier technical foul helped it bump it up over the four and a half mark. That gave us a sliver of hope. Um... But just once again, no clutchness anywhere on this Knicks team. And if, you know, Tom Thibodeau, you know, he loves to preach defense and all that. But, you know, that's all good and well. You can do that. But, uh, you know, nobody on the floor is kind of truly believing in that message. Games are coming down to the wire. Uh, Knicks aren't down, you know, 10 points with two minutes left. No, no, no. They're right in the th in, in the thick of it. You know, down three, down two with two minutes left. But nobody can close out games here. So Evan Fournier, 16 points, 4 rebounds. We get Alec Burke still at the 1, 5 points on 20% shooting, 1 assist. What are we doing? Uh, Manuel quickly kind of floundered coming off the bench, 5 points, 5 rebounds, shooting 22%. Cam Reddish, 6 points, got to the line a couple of times, but that was really it. But once again, really not playing these you know younger players these bench players still sticking with the starters that consistently do not win games so jazz get the win 113 104 can always bet on our sponsors folks the new york knicks gotta love it all righty that is all the nba from last night now let's see if we can keep this gravy money train rolling tonight in the nba folks tons of games on that's what we love to see folks having our pick of the value let's see if we can repeat it folks and see if uh, vegas is gonna kind of you know one up themselves see showing any more disrespectful value like we saw last night so here we go first game up we get the Suns at the 76ers Suns plus one 76ers minus one Suns on the back to back no thank you then we get the Celtics at the Nets. Celtics, wow, wow, wow. Celtics minus eight and a half. Nets plus eight and a half here. Um, uh, well, the, the Nets are at home, so we get no Kyrie Irving. Is James Harden playing tonight? Let's quickly see. We get James Harden being a game time decision. All righty. Uh, this Celtics team, once again, they've been surprising us, folks. Slowly turning a corner, and here we go. This is this is why we love NBA Fantasy Labs, folks. They are on top of it. James Harden is out. Out officially eight minutes ago see finally NBA Fantasy Labs getting out in front of the news that's what we love to see so not gonna bet on the Nets without Kevin Durant Kyrie Irving or James Harden James Harden potentially getting traded I know we heard from Steve Nash saying no he's not gonna get traded but not playing tonight on the you know kind of eve of the eve of the trade deadline not wanting him to get injured and he risking that asset there so watch for James Harden to be traded folks not playing tonight mm, I know he's a little banged up and he didn't play the other game but you know this is a little bit more curious sir when there's no Kyrie there's kind of no you know plan B you know it's got to be one of the big three because that's all they truly got this team's gonna look awful tonight I don't know if I believe that much into the Celtics of winning minus eight and a half on the road but I definitely know you don't bet the Nets plus eight and a half here tonight so staying away from this game altogether. Then we get the Pacers at the Hawks. Pacers plus 10.5. Hawks minus 10.5. You know, we don't really love swallowing all these points here. Hawks got a little knocked off of their kind of pedestal last game, losing to the Mavericks in, you know, decently dominating fashion. I mean, usually we call anything more than 10 points a blowout. Hawks only lost by 9, but, um, you know, they lost against the Mavericks team, who they should have been competitive against. That should have been really like a 4-3 point game. So that's a little bit of a blowout against a good team. So we'll see if the Hawks can rebound. Not going to swallow 10 there. And we know there's no bet ability on this Pacers team. They are sending in the rest of the season as well. All right, next game up here. Clippers at the Grizzlies. Ooh, man, this one's tough. But, ooh, man, this one is tough. Clippers plus eight. Grizzlies minus eight. And I think I'm loving the Clippers with the points here folks plus eight points we know this Grizzlies team is great don't get us wrong but we get Norman Powell he's already you know had his first game his introductory game with the Clippers maybe they kind of you know play around with some lineups here um, and then for the Grizzlies we get Dylan Brooks is still out Killian T Tilly is out Santi Aldama is out, so nobody that we really care about. Um, so, man, oh, man, Clippers. Mm, the plus eight is kind of enticing. I think I'm going to stay away from it, though. 
All right, then the next game up here, we get the Rockets at the Pelicans. Pelicans minus nine. Rockets plus nine. All righty. Are our people that just got traded going to be playing for the Pelicans tonight? Probably not. So Josh Hart not playing. Thomas Sertonski not playing. Nikhil Alexander-Walker not playing because they get just got traded out of there. Um, so not going to bet the Pelicans here. The, you know, the minus nine seems like good value, but they're in the midst of a trade. You know, clearing out space. How is that going to affect just the overall chemistry? Are they going to come out a little flat-footed here? So I'm not going to bet the Pelicans just because they were involved with the trade today. And, you know, we, we're not betting this Rockets team. What are you, crazy? No, thank you. So staying away from that game. Man, man, we are striking out here today. But still, what do we got? Five games left? Let's see if we can round it out here. Let's finish strong. Here we go. Man, man, these big-ass spreads too. Sheesh. Next game up, Pistons at the Mavericks. Mavericks minus 11. Pistons plus 11. Once again, I'm just not comfortable swallowing all those points here, especially on this Mavericks team that I don't really trust 100%. They, they're they winning, so I, I, I can't knock them too much, but I don't know if, if I trust them to be winning these games in dominating fashion. And once again, there's no bet ability on this Pistons team. Alrighty, next game up. Knicks at the Nuggets. Knicks plus eight. Nuggets minus eight. And Knicks on the back-to-back, -back, so we got to stay away from it. So we have to take a little bit of a pause in our sponsorship, folks, okay? Not going to be able to be kind of truly sponsored by the Knicks here today. Cannot endorse the Nuggets minus eight because they are on the back-to-back. -back. So got to stay away from it, folks. We will pause, pause our sponsorship tonight. All right, final three games. Here we go. F can we get something, please? Jeez. <laughs> Jeez, something. Here we go. Then we get the Bucks at the Lakers. Bucks minus three and a half. Lakers plus three and a half. Now, this Bucks team has been absolutely blowing out play teams these last two games. Um, winning against the Clippers, 137-113 their last game. Blowing out the Blazers, 137-108. So this offense is rocking and rolling. This is the healthiest they've really been all season. And uh, this Lakers team, once again, Russell Westbrook just got benched. Are his feeling hurts? Um, what is this Lakers team kind of thinking about in regards of trades and all that? So for the Bucks, everybody's good to go besides Grayson Allen being a game-time decision. And for the Lakers, LeBron's a game-time decision. Expect him to play. Anthony Davis, a game-time decision. I would also expect him to play as well. And Kendrick Nunn is still out. And uh, man, oh man, Lakers plus four. I know they just won their last game. And I know LeBron is good and all that. But this Bucks team has just been absolutely something else these last two games. And I'm ready to start cashing in on it. I do not believe this big time offensive streak ends tonight. Let's cash in and ride this wave a little bit more. We'll swallow four here with the Bucks tonight. This Lakers team, they got LeBron, they got AD down low, but overall, I don't know if uh, they've got the supporting cast like the Bucks do to kind of make this game competitive. All right, then uh, last two games. Here we go. Uh, we get the Timberwolves at the Kings. Timberwolves minus five. Kings plus five. Timberwolves only minus five here. I think I'm loving it. Uh, for the Timberwolves, we get Patrick Beverly a game time decision. D'Angelo Russell a game. Why are you a game time decision, D'Angelo Russell? You just got back to playing. Um, so I think D'Angelo Russell should be playing, but at least at minimum, we do get Carl Anthony Towns and Anthony Edwards. And then for the Kings, Darren Fox is still a game time decision. We get any update on him? Is he finally going to be able to give it a go here tonight? Today in tonight's game, we get anything? Uh, no updated news. So I'm kind of liking the Timberwolves here. They've been a little dominant. What do we got? A nice win streak? Four game winning streak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The big three getting it done. So Kings, eh, no winnability there, folks. Only have to swallow here five with the Timberwolves. I will take that. Absolutely. Especially with the Kings potentially thinking about trading people. All right, and then the last game of the night here, the Magic at the Blazers. Magic minus one, Blazers plus one. Um, so don't expect any of the Blazers to be playing. Just uh, Anthony Simons here. McCollum's done. Tony Snell is out. Larry Nance Jr., they're all gone, so. Um, so this Magic team, folks, we wanted to bet on them, but this is the worst time because they just left a bad taste in our mouth and we have officially been selling. We have officially sold the Magic. So this would have been the right spot to bet the Magic here, but they had no believability heading into this game here, folks. So I'm going to stay away from it. Let's not push it too much. Um, I do kind of like the Magic minus one, but the way they've been playing recently, we cannot rely on their offense here. This should be an easy win for the Magic, but uh, they're... they're 
the games leading up to this game, leaving a bad taste in our mouth, so we're not officially going to take it. So if you're liking this, if you're liking the Magic, we do kind of endorse it for that, but we're not going to officially endorse it. We would kind of give you that extra nudge. You, you think, oh, you know, that, and that's how I want to be used as well, folks. I don't want you all just blindly following following me. That's too much pressure on me, okay? Um, but um, if you just need a little extra nudge, be like, oh, I, th I think I do like betting the magic here. Uh, oh, what do you say takes by fans? Oh, you kind of like it as well? That's the nudge I want to be. Um, so... That's that. But uh, we are officially endorsing tonight Bucks minus four and the Timberwolves minus five here. Um, so we did find, we did end up finding the good value. So there it is, folks. There it is. Bucks minus four, Timberwolves minus five tonight. Alrighty, that is all the NBA we had to go over for today. So now let's shift gears to the NFL, where there's just a lot to talk about, folks. We got a, a coaching news, we got an assault news, and we've got uh, uh, Deflate Gate news. Five years later, seven years later, folks, now they want to say uh, Deflate Gate was not real and they made it all up. And once again, this is you know going classically back to nobody ever taking accountability. Always everybody, even when they know that they're doing wrong doubling tripling down saying no we're doing nothing wrong so once again classic NFL nobody wants to take responsibility once again the Brian Flores situation every team was going to be every team came out official statements folks coming out and being like no 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 this is this is wild to say this is there's no merit to any of this this is what they all use there's no merit here Roger Goodell no merit uh the Dolphins saying no merit and my integrity is at stake uh the Broncos saying no merit everyone's like this man is out of his gore. There's no merit in anything that he is assuming or that he's claiming. And then a day later, Roger Goodell says, Hey, um, let's all try to do better. We know this has been going on. Let's try to do better. It's like, you just told us there was merit just off that letter alone. What are y'all talking about? And now we're getting that, uh, this deflate gate story. And this flew under the radar folks. Have you heard of this? And I think this story has been out for like two days. Now this was uh, posted on Twitter. February 6th at uh, 8.48 p.m. So it kind of like slid under the radar. Nobody really picked it up here. Went under my nose. I was luckily able to find this. So I want to go into the story to, t to see what's the new developments on Deflate Gate because they're saying that the NFL kind of covered up evidence and, um, you know, the evidence that they got to start the investigation wasn't that good and wasn't really creditable. So let's talk it all through. Let's see what the actual writing is telling us what the actual facts are so let's see what we're getting here in deflate gate folks and if they're going to be lying about tom brady the grace of all time having to get kind of a competitive advantage because of you know lesser air in the football if they're trying to cover that up because it was all a little nonsense when we kind of heard it we were like oh he took a little air out of the ball is it that much of a big deal and once again i don't think it was uh by tom brady i think it was for the garrett blunt who kept fumbling the ball I, I So I, I never even lugged, liked that kind of narrative that Tom Brady needed less air on the ball. It's like he's already won multiple Super Bowls. He's already the greatest of all time. And now in 2015, he needs to let air out of the ball. It just never clicked. It never made sense to us. And once again, you know, we didn't have the show back in 2015. So I wasn't able to voice my opinions and my voice out here. But I never bought that it was uh, to deflate the balls to help Tom Brady. I thought it was to help LeGarren Blount, and I believe in that game, LeGarren Blount had like two rushing touchdowns, and he didn't fumble the ball there. Leading up to that game, the man was fumbling. So if anybody needed the advantage of less air in the ball, it wasn't Tom Brady. That's nonsense. It's nonsense. It would be the running back, LeGarren Blount, who needs a little bit of a better grip on the ball because that man was fumbling butterfingers all over the field that year. So... That's that, but now let's see what they're truly saying about this deflate gate. Here we go. Let's go on to this article. Here we go. First, let's take a closer look at the development that caused Deflate Gate to mushroom from a curiosity into a firestorm. It came from Chris Mortensen of ESPN, who reported that 11 of the 12 footballs used by the New England offense during the game against the Colts were underinflated by at least two pounds each. 11 of the 12 were all underinflated by two pounds each. The information was eventually shown to be false. Mort took the bullet for it, never complaining or calling out his source. In fact, he 
clung to the discredited information for months before his original item at ESPN.com was, quote, clarified with an acknowledgement that the initial report was incorrect. So once again, he even clung to the dis in discredited information. So once again, everybody doubles down when they know it's wrong. They all double down. It's just, can, can we stop? It, that hinders progress for everybody. Take a breath. Admit that you, um, you made a mistake. You read the information wrong. Anything like that. So it doesn't blow out of proportion. The Patriots lost a draft pick, folks. Everybody wanted kind of Tom Brady like exiled from the league. And once again, you know, cheating with Bill Belichick. That got, you know, blown out of proportion again because, you know, he did have history. And now they're like, oh, they're cheating again. The cheaters will cheat again. Branded as cheaters because people cannot admit when they were wrong. Folks, just admit that you are wrong. Get better. Move on. Learn from your mistakes. But nobody in the NFL wants to do that from Roger Goodell to people at ESPN. Nobody wants to take any sort of responsibility. Back to the article. So, who was his source? Per a source with knowledge of the situation and as explained in Playmaker, the source, uh, this is a new book they're trying to push where their story comes out. Uh, the source for the notorious 11 of the 12's football report was NFL Executive Vice President of Football Operations, Troy Vincent. It makes sense. It needed to be someone su sufficiently high on the organizational chart to make it credible and to prompt Mortensen to use it, despite the fact that, unbeknownst to Mortensen, it wasn't true. It's unclear whether Vincent deliberately lied to Mortensen. Things were muddled and hazy and confusing in the early days of the scandal. So everything was muddled and hazy, but they had no problem running with the story. Once again, I mean, everybody is to blame here, folks, for... Or, you know, everything that has been happening in the world ever, folks. It's it's the people in all the corporations. It's everybody that's spreading the lies, um, knowing uh, knowing that it's false or not knowing that it's false or things being a little bit muddy, but using that charge language again of being like, hey, this is definitely happening and forcing you know, no kind of, you know, second thought of like, hey, let's try to, you know, keep both sides in, you know, in, uh, you know, in view here. Let's not overreact to one side. Let's have all the facts come out. But nobody's ever interested in facts anymore for some odd reason. It's kind of crazy. Uh, but back to the article. Regardless, the report from Mortensen immediately put the Patriots and quarterback Tom Brady on the defensive, setting the stage for Brady's incredible and definitely not credible press conference just a few days later. Among other things, Brady was asked if he's a cheater. He decided he decidedly unconvincingly response was, quote, I don't believe so. Um but once again, I mean, now the Patriots, and they all have to answer, answer for this. That wasn't even really true at the end of the day. Uh, second, there was an important PS to Deflategate, one that received scant attention in the aftermath of the scandal, in large part because that's what the league wanted. Once again, the league covering up. Oh, we didn't make a mistake. It was. It didn't come from us. We don't know who it came from. It came from high up, but it didn't come from us. And uh, you know, now we're gonna try to uh, you know push the information out there, even though it's not false. Not admitting, hey, we got it wrong. Hey, nope, nope, nope. We're retracting it. No worries. And then you know, a day later, nothing happens and uh, you know everybody's for the better of it uh, but back to the article. Here we go again. Beginning with the 2015 season, the NFL began conducting air pressure spot checks at half times of games. The numbers were collected and protected with none of the information ever coming to light. Hmm, why would they not release the information? Because it does not go with the original narrative. Once again, not admitting mistake here and keeping it going, keeping the charade, keeping the act going. Every game, halftime checking, and they know the numbers are getting the numbers in real time folks they're like oh that well that one was that one's good this one's good folks uh, uh, roger goodell uh, i tested 2,000 footballs today they're all fine uh well let's keep going next week and then the next week Ro goodell these are all good what are you talking about five weeks later well let's just keep going F goodell they're all good still all right well let's just keep one more week one more week and they know folks never admit it can we all just admit maybe we were wrong maybe um what else do we get to here it was expected, given the operation of the ideal gas law, the pressure inside the balls would rise on warm days and that would fall on cold days. That's exactly what happened. As the source put it, 
quote, numerous measurements made at halftime of games during the 2015 season generated numbers beyond the permitted range of 12.5 to 13.5 PSI, with the reading showing a direct correlation between temperature and air pressure. Like normal, have you ever blown up a football, a basketball? Have you ever pumped it up and then you let it just kind of go for a little bit and then it deflates and then you have to repump it? How does the ball lose air? I'm not... I, 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 the Everything affects it. Just sitting there, the air pressure in your house, a cold, not cold, throwing it, catching it, that all affects air pressure. But the first thing was, oh, the Patriots were treat cheating. That's what they jumped to. Once again, mm, it's so frustrating, folks. Nobody ever wants to take accountability. And y'all expect me to take accountability? What are you, crazy? <laughs> if y'all aren't playing by the rules, I'm not playing by the rules. What are you, crazy? Um, I'm not going to be the one playing by the rules when everybody else isn't. That's absolutely crazy. I've got no, if we all want to play by the rules, I'm cool with that. But if the other people aren't playing by the rules, I'm not going to be playing by the rules either. Uh, so that's out there. Uh, but here we go. Once again, on cold days, pressure reading taken before balls were moved to the field resulted in lower readings after 90 minutes of exposure to conditions. On hot days, the pressure increased, and it only could truly take 90 minutes. How long is a football game? A couple hours? Yeah, that's more than 90 minutes. Indeed, it was believed that the actual numbers measured in the footballs used by the Patriots were generally consistent with the numbers that the atmospheric conditions should have generated that day. This should have resulted in a finding that, at most, the evidence was inconclusive as to whether there had been deliberate deflation on the day in question. The evidence was inconclusive, but they ran that they were doing it deliberately. See the problem? The formula for the ideal gas law goes like this. PV equals NRT. And I don't know what any of those means, folks, so don't ask me. I don't do a sign show, folks, okay? One second, folks. Excuse us. All right, we are back. Uh, but yeah, once again, we don't do a science show. We do a sports show. So I don't know what the hell PV equals NRT means. Uh, so uh, the T is temperature. The P is pressure. And the V is volume. There it is, folks. You spell it right out for us. And the t as the temperature drops and the volume of the air in the bladder remains constant, the pressure necessarily drops. So what happened to those numbers from the 2015 season? Per a source with knowledge of the situation and as reported in playmakers the nfl expunged the numbers it happened at the direct order per the source of nfl general counsel counsel jeff pash oh the numbers are expunged oh we don't need to see these we just had a year-long investigation into a cheating scandal in professional sports with one of the greatest organizations, the greatest dynasty ever, but we don't need to know those numbers and we can just expunge them. Just throw them out. Oh, we don't need them anymore. No, no, throw them in the trash. We're done. Throw them in the trash. We've got the information. Well, what was the result? Oh, uh, well, it doesn't matter. We threw out the numbers. Like, ooh, ooh, ooh. All right, why would the league delete the numbers? It's simple. For cold days, the numbers were too close to the actual numbers generated by the New England footballs at halftime of the playoff game against the Colts, which would mean there was no malicious intent and there was no intentional wrongdoing, which means they were innocent. Um, which means that the numbers generated at halftime of the January 2015 AFC Championship were not evidence of cheating, but of the normal operation of air pressure inside a rubber bladder when the temperature drops, just as it was expected. We'd always believe the Patriots and Brady got screwed. While something fishy was indeed happening, based on text messages exchanged by ja John Jastre Meski, in Jim McNally, the NFL failed to catch them in the act. The NFL failed to catch them in the act because the measurements made at halftime of the Colts Patriots game were not out of line with what they should have been. So now, seven years later, now all this information is coming out. Do you see the problem here, folks? There was no admission of guilt. They still, I, they still took away a draft pick. No, wasn't that the consequence? They lost a draft pick. 
So, um, you know, everybody that's expecting, you know, justice and for the full truth to come out for the whole Brian Flores case, you know, I, I wish it would. And I'm hopefully optimistic that all the information and evidence does come out. But uh, here's here's information that it won't. Here's direct source, a direct thing that is showing that we do not get the actual information and it doesn't matter. At the end of the day, facts don't matter. It's all narrative driven what they want it to be. So... That's that, folks. That is that. Seven years later. Oh, yeah. Well, oh, those you're, you're still asking about those silly numbers, <laughs> the air pressure numbers. Oh, yeah, we threw those out. <laughs> seven. Yeah, we threw the we threw those out immediately. Seven years ago, we, we were done with them. So, um, I don't. I, it's just I I understand the frustration, and there should be frustration, folks. But to get this angry. Um, like we're never going to know. And we, once again, we have the same conversations every single year. Um, there needs to be change obviously, but to get as upset, I don't know. I don't know if it does anything good. <laughs> it doesn't do anything. Getting upset, outrage, protesting, nothing matters. Nothing changes. So I don't have the answer. Keep fighting the good fight, everybody. But, uh, um, it doesn't, doesn't matter. That's really all it comes down to. Nothing matters. That's the biggest takeaway from the today show. Nothing matters. That's all it is. So that's that. Um, let's keep going here, folks. We are, we are running out of a little time here today. Not going to get to everything I wanted, unfortunately, but let's finish up the stories here. Here we go. New head coach hiring here, and this is going to complete really all of the hires. So the Saints end up hiring Dennis Allen as the next head coach for the Saints. All righty. Now, offensive, a defensive guy. He is a defensive guy. So we don't love it, but they did keep it in-house, and Dennis Allen has been with the Saints for tons of years, folks. I mean, he goes back to 2015, the whole deflate gate. I mean, he truly kicked it off, yes? <laughs> Um, so 2015 interim defensive coordinator with the Saints. Then he gets pr uh, promoted to senior defensive assistant coach. And then since 2016, he's been their defensive coordinator. So I do like that. They kept it in house. Um, let's, um, let's get our note up here that we can write on, uh, Dennis Allen. Here we go. Dennis Allen hired. Don't love it. I don't love the hire because defensive guy. But he's uh, he's been with the team. He's been with the team. He knows the team. I'm sure the team respects him. Um, I, I don't. I, I haven't heard anything bad about the Saints players dissing him. The Saints really kind of seem to like him. We've seen the Saints defense be very good, shutting out Tom Brady this season. That's pretty gosh dang good to shut out the goat having his best season ever. So we know the defense is good. Uh, but he's been with the team. Uh, he's been with the team. Let's finish up this saw here. Uh, but he's been with the team, so that's a plus. That's a plus. Um, and then the, the other reason why I don't really love this hire is because the Saints offense has absolutely no identity, folks. First of all, they don't even have the quarterback. So where is he going to be able to make the right decision on quarterback? Is he going to be able to gauge the talent? I hope Dennis Allen still has, you know, Sean Payne's number on speed dial to be like, hey, Sean, I'm coming up with this draft. You know, what, what are you thinking about, you know, the quarterbacks here? Can I work with the quarterback already on our team? Should I draft one? What about free agency? Who are you liking at quarterback? They, hopefully he still can get into touch with Sean Payton but uh yeah just no offensive identity you know Michael Thomas probably won't be with the team anymore uh you don't have your quarterback do you go back to Jameis Winston can he stay healthy one more second folks Alrighty, we are back again. Um, but yeah, just no offensive identity. Jameis Winston. We do like Trevor Simeon a little bit. Taysom Hill proven he can't really be the guy for a full season. Um, and then we get the whole Alvin Kamara thing. Who knows what's going to happen with him? Does he even want to be with the Saints anymore? Is this man going to go to jail because we have the picture of this man absolutely beaten uh let's let's show the photo now since we got it on topic i mean man that is boof 
This is not official, folks. I believe this is the real guy. This is going on uh, around on Twitter. No real official sources are kind of tweeting out the picture because it's pretty gosh dang graphic. I mean, this man, his whole face is swollen, folks. This eye is swollen shut. Blood cuts. Uh, big swollen face right here, folks. This man was beaten by Alvin Kamara. Now the story is kind of, it was like three on one. It was Alvin Kamara with some of his guys, some of his friends, and they were beating up this guy. Now, did he have it coming? Was he kind of annoying? Was he harassing Alvin Kamara? We don't know that quite yet. Obviously, physical violence is never the answer for anything. Uh, we know how fans can get and all that, especially in Vegas, being rowdy. I'm not saying this man deserved it, but we would like to know the context of everything that went down that night to get the most informed decision. But either way, Alvin Kamara, you know, taken into custody, being charged. This man, holy moly, folks, like this is big time. It's on our, we like this tweet, so you can just go to our Twitter account, Takes by Fans, if you're just listening. Jeez Louise, one more time, man, oh man, we'll be right back one second all righty back again here we go um but yeah alvin Kamara really beat beat up this guy folks truly not good. Uh, so we don't know what's going to be happening with Alvin Kamara. Will he be suspended? Will he go to a different team? Potentially there. So there's just no real foundation laid offensively. And we do know offense needs to be there. The Saints defense was good. What happened? They still didn't make the playoffs this season, unfortunately. So um, let's get it on the note here. No offensive identity in place and we're gonna count that as a negative so uh dennis allen i like just because he's an in-house hire the guys know him seems like a good guy seems like a good leader and all that but overall we need some sort of offense here and the saints just have absolutely no offensive identity truly in place here so big uphill uphill challenge for dennis allen and how to run the saints team big shoes to fill obviously still you know Still trying to deal with no Drew Brees. It's only been one year removed and already not making the playoffs. Bigger shoes to fill of Sean Payton. Everybody loves him. Great guy. Great coach. Um, great offensive mind. So tons of big shoes to fill here for Dennis Allen. And we'll see if he can get it done. But uh, he's gonna, his work's going to start right now in the offseason. Um, alrighty, so now that's not, let's, uh, quickly, um, this is, we're not going to be able to get to the Joe Burrow film today, unfortunately, but let's quickly check the Super Bowl line. Is it changing any? We still get it at Bengals plus four and a half. I'm loving it. And why, uh, you know, the 1% that is still kind of hesitant on truly locking it in right at the current moment is because the Rams defense. We know this Rams defense is fantastic. We know the Bengals offensive line isn't the greatest. Joe Burrow getting sacked nine times already in the Super Bowl in one game, and we we know the Rams defense has you no know, Von Miller and Aaron Donald and we know Aaron Donald has just been talking about the ring all year long the man has already you know broken records the man is already kind of in greatest of all time defensive end uh, discussion already uh, but he's always been talking about the ring the ring and the ring and that's why Von Miller went there because we get this Von Miller Rams aim to bring Aaron Donald a championship saying quote our whole friendship is about winning the Super Bowl these two great defensive players just want the ring now they're done chasing stats and accolades they just want to win the ring because they know that's what's truly going to solidify them as great of their positions potentially in the greatest of all time category for their specific position so we know this Rams defense is going to absolutely get after it here and uh, we'll see if Joe Burrow is ready to face that. And I'm sure he is. He's shown us nothing that truly goes against that. Even getting sacked nine times, able to make the big throws, able to win the game, able to put up a couple of points there to win the game overall. So I get the Rams defense is good. I know Von Miller and Aaron Donald are just chomping at the bit to win the Super Bowl. Um, I don't know if I don't know if that's gonna be enough for me to truly bet on this Rams team just because of Von Miller and Aaron Donald, but 
We'll see how that plays out. I don't love that we get this quote right here. Our whole, our, our whole friendship is about winning the Super Bowl. Man, oh, man, that's going a little against my Bengals plus four and a half. But we still got more days, folks. We don't have to make up our mind right now, which is absolutely fantastic. So once again, all the for the rest of this week, finding and looking at the Rams and the Bengals throughout the season to get more information, to get more confidence in our pick, in our bet. Um, but I think I go down now to like 98% because I know Von Miller and Aaron Donald just want to win the ring and get after Joe Burrow. And, uh, you know, they could single-handedly, I mean, the defense can single-handedly win the game here for the Rams. You shut down Joe Burrow, they're not going to be able to do anything offensively. I mean, that's going to be the win there, folks. You just got to put up a field goal or two to win the game. You know, Matthew Stafford and Sean McVay can definitely do that. So either side, the defense can truly single-handedly win the game themselves. They just have to go out and get it done, and we'll see if they can do that. Um, all righty, folks, we'll save this one for later. And just quickly, let's end the show on this one right here. Kyler Murray unfollows Arizona Cardinals on social media accounts. Oh, my goodness. Are they going to move off of Kyler Murray? Two kind of unfortunate ends to the season these last two seasons for the Cardinals. Show glimpses of greatness. Overall, is Kyler Murray too short? Are they going to move off of Kyler Murray? Do they not have the full confidence behind Kyler Murray? Does Kyler Murray feel like he doesn't have the confidence and this is the support from the ownership, the head coach. Once again, you need to have leadership at the head coaching position. Same thing with Tua and Brian Flores. Never had that full support. Maybe not to any fault of Brian Flores of his own. Once again, we have to wait for more information to come out. Um, but overall, the, the head coach quarterback combo must be there. Do you get any distrust? It can ruin the entire thing. So we'll see what happens here with Kyler Murray. If this is the start of something bad here and they're looking to move past him, Maybe Cliff Kingsbury's like, hey, I tried to do it. What happens? We lose at the end of the season. We start off strong. We lose at the end of the season. And uh, maybe this is not sustainable winning here for the Cardinals. We know Kyler Murray's a fantastic athlete, a great runner, has a solid arm, but once again, small. Can't make the big reads. We saw him in the Pro Bowl, folks. And what did he do? First throw, tipped up in the air, pick six. <laughs> pick six by Kyler Murray, first play of the Pro Bowl. Small quarter quarterbacks uh, not being able to get the ball over the defensive lineman and that's uh, I know we didn't talk about the Pro Bowl yesterday but this is kind of like the only thing I wanted to say about it two things to say about it the small quarterbacks, the defensive line, the offensive line, they weren't really going that hard. So the defensive linemen were just always getting their hands up and they were batting all the balls down from the shorter quarterbacks. Kyler Murray, um, there was one more. I think even Russell Wilson was getting some of his balls batted up. Um, so these smaller quarterbacks, even in the Pro Bowl, once again, going into our narrative that we're going to look into depth into the offseason. Are we done with 6'2 and under quarterbacks only taking 6'3 and above? Kyler Murray is definitely under. 6-2, folks, okay? So we'll see what happens with Kyler Murray, folks, but he's unfollowing the Cardinals on social media, and we, usually we see this when they're about to leave a team. We, this is not the first time a player has unfollowed their team on social media. Um, all righty, and then the last thing to talk about the Pro Bowl, can we stop with the uh, the removing of onside kicks for the 4th and 15? That was absolutely dumb to watch, and taking the special teams out of football, I don't think it's the right play to make it more offensive. I don't like that either. So uh, keep the – it's just like they had it perfect. The onside kick was fine, but then they changed the rule where you can't overstack one side because of player safety. That's what y'all should be mad at here, not to scrap the entire special teams for a 4th and 15 play. Uh, I don't think any were converted. They never looked good. People were still checking it down. It was bizarre to watch. Fourth and 15, you don't get it. You don't get the ball, and you give the, the your opponent the ball on, like, the 25-yard line, and they were still checking it down. What? So stop with the 4th and 15. This will not fix it. This will not make the game better. Get that thought out of the potential rule change here of uh, negating the onside kick with the 4th and 15. That's the dumbest thing I saw from the Pro Bowl, honestly. We know the Pro Bowl wasn't good. It turned into two-hand touch. Um, so... Smaller quarterbacks got exposed in the Pro Bowl, and uh, the fourth and fifteen is the dumbest thing ever. Fix the offside, fix the onside kick back to the original rule where you can stack one side or the other. Because now you got the mental game. I go ten on one side, one on one side, um, and then kick it to the one on one, have a one on one matchup, or you have three to the one side defensively, and then eight on the other side to kind of play the odds a little bit better. 
Uh, I get player safety is a big thing, but you're not going to make the game 100% safe. And onside kicks maybe come up uh, a cup once a game. I mean, I, I don't know if we should be um, overblowing and truly kind of making special teams not that great anymore. And I still think special teams should be a factor in football. I know a lot of people just want to take kicking out all the other field goals, extra points, punts, all that. Just take it out. I don't think that's the right call either. This is a team sport, folks. I know y'all just want to make it offensive throwing. But, you know, if we keep going down that road, I think the game will just be a little garbage at the end of the day. Once it's kind of fully 1 million percent committed to the offense and player safety. But... We'll see what happens here, but the 4th and 15 looked absolutely stupid. It was stupid to watch. Uh, all righty, folks. That's going to do it for us today, folks. We are going to get out of here. We're back tomorrow live noon Eastern, and we'll have you know our full time so we don't have to cut anything, but we'll be focusing on the uh, Joe Burrow's best offensive game. We'll look at uh, his playoff game uh, getting sacked nine times to see if we have any change in our current 98% believability in the Bengals plus four and a half, and we'll see what we have to watch for the Rams as well. We'll watch both sides. So that's going to do it for us today, folks. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. We'll see if any trades, any more trades happen. So far, none have, tr uh, no more trades have happened, I don't think. Um, yeah, that's a mock trade. I was about to say, okay. Um, yeah, so we are all good and up to date on the trades, and we will catch you tomorrow for anything that happens in the interim. So we are out of here. Back tomorrow live, noon Eastern, folks. Have a great one, and uh, make some money in the NBA, folks. We gave you some good picks, and we're coming off a fantastic day where we literally called everything right, folks. Could not be more right yesterday. All righty, folks. We are out of here. Have a great one, and we will.